40 pound bag last us two and a half weeks. <laughs> Crazy. But I like the birds. Keep on feeding them. When I had first set it, I had the wine cork out here, and the mice would come out on the plank and then turn around. So then I moved it a little bit closer, thinking that it would work better, but I obviously had it too close, because the mice were standing a little too far back, so it wouldn't pivot, but still grabbing the wine cork. As you can see, they've been getting my bait. Stealing my bait. And I'm going to make some changes to my plank. A couple more improvements as well. Yeah. Here we go again. So there's the five that I just scooped out and the five that I took out of the bucket last week. I left them here because I figured a little weasel or something would come and take it. But they're still here. So the bucket's working. But again, I didn't get the catches on camera. All I have is I'm stealing my bait. And I think the problem is the bucket gets worked so much that it eats up my whole SD card. It fills it up. And then when they start getting caught, I'm not getting it. It's really aggravating. So I'm going to put a larger SD card in the camera, make sure I got fresh batteries, make some changes to the bucket, <laughs> Start over. But we are catching mice though, you gotta give me that. Alright? I think I think the count's probably somewhere around sixty or so. The mice are just gonna keep moving in, like I said. Because when you look out the window, squirrels just keep coming. Alright? They're coming from far and wide to pick up the seed on the ground here. And then the owls take the squirrels away, and then more squirrels keep coming. And I think that's what's happening with the mice, because we don't have that many mice living under the cabin. I've got no sign of them whatsoever underneath there, except when they're in the bucket. <laughs> well, here we go again. Looks like I need to make more improvements to the bucket trap. It's a good project for me and the kiddos, and I just love how they show their enthusiasm for such things. Now I figure if I cut this off and switch this out and shorten that up, we'll have a serious mouse catching machine right here. Frankie was giving me the look, and when those extra tools came out, I was really getting the look from both of them. <laughs> So I decided to remove the foil ramp because that just wasn't performing properly. And Tildy thought it was a good idea. But I left the hanging doohickey and she thought that was a good idea too. And Frankie decided to make his own alterations to the diving board. So I made a new one out of aluminum flashing. And I think this will be just a ticket for handling the mouse problem. <laughs> yes sir. I bet old daddy always overseeing the project from the heavens <laughs> and smiling ear to ear because he loved stuff like this. He'd be right onto this project. <laughs> so I put a wider platform on here because they were gripping the edge of it. They might still be able to do it, I don't know, but the platform's twice as wide as it used to be. And then I put a couple of angle pieces here to eliminate little holes where they could get their toenails in to grip that part. I also put these angles here. So hopefully they'll come out here and that'll dump them into the drink. But I'm having a little issue with the counterbalance, but I think it's going to work out okay. We're going to see. I tried to eliminate all the grab points that they had. Maybe they'll come out here and still grab this edge, I don't know. But the platform's twice as wide now, so hopefully we'll get them without any free meals <laughs> being robbed. So I'm going to set it back up 
I'll give you an update in a day or two. <laughs> I'm going to share another one of my quick and easy recipes with you all. And I mean easy. Anybody can make this. I'm going to use chicken thighs because that's our favorite part of the bird. You can use any part of the chicken. This works with pork as well. I prefer some chicken that's got the bone in. And the chicken thighs, great tasting. I'm going to use four of them and a jar of mango peach salsa. Any fruit salsa should do the trick. Okay, this is what we get at Aldi's. Really inexpensive. Works great. Now we always leave the skin on the chicken. Love the chicken skin. But for this application, I take it off. It's not going to get crispy. It just gets really soggy, so it's best to come off. So I'm peeling up the thighs here, and then I'm just going to brown them in a pan in some hot oil. I'm not going to cook these thoroughly in the pan. I'm just browning them up. It really adds to the flavor. Use whatever type of oil you want. I'm using coconut oil. Use olive oil. Use whatever you want. Well, the chicken's browning up nicely. The next step, to finish this off, I do it a couple different ways. Sometimes I just put the chicken all in a pot, dump in the jar of salsa, stir it around a little bit, put a cover on the pot, let it slow simmer on the wood stove all day long. Much like I do that pork pot recipe I showed you in the past. You can put all of this into a crock pot, let it slow cook all day, that comes out nicely. Today, I'm going to put it in a baking dish, cover it with the salsa, I'm going to put it in the Kitchen Queen oven. It's hovering around 250, 275 right now. And I'm just going to let it slow cook for a few hours. I suppose you could put it in a microwave, but I'm not the person to be talking to about that. And Frankie agrees on the microwave cooking. <laughs> Get the chicken in the pan there. Most of the time, we just use the chicken and the salsa. Nothing more. That's all you need. Comes out awesome. But we both like spicy food, and we really like sweet and spicy. So we're going to kick this up a little bit. Going to add a little bit of garlic, a little bit of soy sauce, and some cayenne pepper. Mix it up, and then we're going to dump that in. Just give it that sweet and spicy flavor. The salsa. A good heap of minced garlic. Some soy sauce. Oh, I'm going to throw in about a good heaping half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. That ought to kick it up a notch. There we go. So that's it. Chicken and salsa. Or spice up your salsa a little bit. That fruit salsa, especially the peach, mango, works out really good. Gives a really nice flavor to it. Now whether you decide to cover it or not, that's entirely up to you. This Kitchen Queen oven holds the steam. It doesn't vent like a conventional oven. So things don't dry out in here. So I'm going to throw that right in the oven. I'm going to let it cook for a few hours. And then we're going to serve it up. I like it with a nice heaping pile of mashed potatoes. Serve it with rice or whatever side dish you prefer. So here we go. And in the oven it goes. What do you think, Tildy? Gonna work? I think someone's loving up so she can get some chicken skin. <laughs> Yep, that is going to be tasty. I haven't shared any of our dump scores with you lately. But we went to the dump yesterday. <laughs> Show you a few things we brought home. <laughs> we brought home more than we brought there. <laughs> First off, I saw this heater 
one of these glow warm heaters there. I decided I'll take it home, I'll fiddle with it. It's not something I'm going to use in the cabin, but maybe in the workshop. I don't really know. I figured I'd fiddle with it. If I don't want it, I bring it back to the dump. That's what I love. Hassle-free return policy. And I got this flange here. I don't think it goes to that. But even this part here, for like the ice box that I have built into the wall, this would be a good vent for it. Keep the critters out. On the tennis ball for Frankie. These little doodads with some tea lights. Not too bad. I'll hang them up. This is the third or fourth. I think the third piece of luggage that I've gotten from the dump. You know, cheap stuff, American tourist, or I don't know. Good enough. All the zippers are in place, everything works. We found some clothing too. I want to show you. I like vintage hunting clothes, right? Look at these babies. Woolrich, right? These are vintage. Doubled up in the seat, double in the knees. Flawless. I wish they were green, but they're not. Stuff like that for out ice fishing or sitting on a deer stand, fantastic. We always bring home some little fun toys for the kids. They play with them and once they start popping an eye out or something, then we, we trash them. But they love them for a few hours. They get a kick out. Mama got a pair of pants and a little coach handbag. <laughs> whoop de doo <laughs> Well, look at this. L.L. Bean. That's nice. I, I like that. That was a good score for Mama. I got a red chamois shirt. Got a little blemish right there, but that's all right. You know, good cabin shirt. And my luggage. So I'm all set to travel. <laughs> yeah. So we've been scrounging up stuff to bring to the dump because what comes around goes around. <laughs> I want to give you a little update on the bubble foil that I put under here last winter. You gotta see this. Okay, the insulation under here has been up over a year now. And as you can see, it has not been disturbed whatsoever by the rodents. It's just like the day we put it up. With the bubble foil stapled to the underside of the floor, and the floor joists are exposed, heat transfers down through this a little bit. And the skirting is insulated. So whatever heat transfers down through the floor gets trapped under here because the skirting is insulated. The skirting is nothing but 2x4s. It's framed with 2x4s. It's got sheathing on the outside. One layer of bubble foil stapled to the inside, which traps 3.5 inches of air in the wall. Fantastic insulator. If I insulated that floor with a heavy R factor, like the experts recommend, then I'd have to run a heater under here to keep the pipes from freezing. I know people that spend crazy amounts of money insulating their house to, so it's like a R70 and brag about it, but the house is so tight that they have to run power to have an air exchanger and stuff like that. It's just 
idiotic. It's idiotic. I'm showing this again because there's a lot of people building cabins. When they tell people they're going to use bubble foil, people discourage them from it. They talk them right out of it. Because the bubble foil has an R factor of approximately 1 or something like that. Okay? I mean, it doesn't look very impressive, right? So they go another route. They use styrofoam, and then the mice and the ants trash it. You try to use fiberglass insulation in this floor. You're going to have to go crazy stapling up mesh. What a pain. And yet the mice are probably going to find their way into it. And you can't get under here with sheets of plywood, work around all of these old piers and girders and stuff. Why bother when you can staple up something like this and call it a day? It's been a year, over a year, the stuff hasn't been touched. And you see how many mice I've been pulling out of here. I've gotten around 60 so far from under the camp. But there's no sign of them in the insulation. And I'm going to show you one more time. This is the ground outside the skirting, right here. Frozen hot as a rock. And right inside the skirting, look at that. Look at that. That far apart, frozen, not frozen. If you're going to insulate a cabin, put more focus in insulating your skirting than insulating the floor, especially if you have pipes underneath, okay? Because if you just insulate the floor and you let all the air blow through here, it's not going to work as good. If I had my choice to insulate either the floor or the skirting, but I couldn't do both, I'd leave the floor uninsulated and I'd insulate the skirting. The skirting is very, very important if you want to have warm floors, especially, I mean, it's a no-brainer. If you have pipes under here, you've got to skirt it. Showing that one more time because a lot of people are asking, and they get talked out of using the bubble foil because of the R factor alone. Going just by the R factor is like, when people say the more formal education you have, the more money you're going to make, or the more money you make, the happier your life will be, you know that is a bunch of crap. So is the R factor in this application. I got my dump shirt on. I got my cocktail. My list of questions. A uh, border collie at my feet. <laughs> We're good to go. <laughs> well, since I've been showing these little video clips of the mice working the bucket trap, I've gotten a lot more questions about the trail cameras. Okay? And I showed these earlier. These are Wild Game Innovations. I'm going to put the link down below. As you can see, it takes nice video, fabulous pictures. They're inexpensive. They haven't failed me yet. So far, so good. I really like these things. And I've had a lot of more questions about the cleats. It's getting that time of year. These cleats, I showed these last year when I first bought them. They are fantastic. Now, when you're shopping for cleats, you're going to find some that look just like this that are really cheap. And you're going to find some that look just like this and they're really expensive. These are middle of the road. These are the Wieners brand. I'm going to put the link down below. They're fantastic. For the investment, If we have about a mile and a half of ice out here. And without these on our feet, we'd be on our ass. <laughs> okay. Regarding the links, whenever I'm showing something in my videos, whether it's a flashlight, or the cleats, or my meat cutting equipment, I always put the link down below. But in the video like I did with the meat cutting equipment, there was a lot of items there. I just had a question, someone asking me for the link for the knife sharpener. I put a few links there, but there's a link that says all the items we use and recommend can be found in one convenient location. When you click on that, it brings you to Amazon and it just says the boss's general store or something like that. that, that, that 
We don't own a store. It's just a little fun little header I put up there. So all the stuff that you see, whether it's a generator or a chainsaw or whatever that I'm showing in the videos, I will put the link right there. So if you click on that, bookmark it, then you see something in my video, you want to know where to get it, or you're asking questions about it, you want to know some specs, this, that, and the other thing, just click on that, you'll find the item there, because whenever I show something, I put it in that category down there. Okay, for your convenience, it's all there, and it supports the channel. Okay. I want to bring something to the table here. I want to reiterate the fact that when I post a picture of a president, it doesn't mean that I am in favor or against that president. When I did the video about the Chaga, I showed pictures of Hillary and Bill Clinton and Putin, I don't know, Obama, drinking a coffee. And I just did it for fun. I couldn't find one of Trump drinking coffee. And I made the statement that all I could find was pictures of Trump drinking cocktails. Because that's what I found. I never said alcohol. It was cocktails. They're cocktail glasses. It's wine glass and a champagne glass and a cocktail glass. So I've got this going here to prove a point. When you saw me drinking this, and I said a cocktail, you are probably, how many of you are thinking, oh my God, he's drinking on camera here, or just a Sunday morning, a Sunday morning. Uh, right. Assumptions. All right. This is vegetable juice cocktail with a stalk of celery. There's no vodka in here or anything. All right. It's a cocktail glass. I just did it to prove a point. When I saw photos of Trump drinking from cocktail glasses, all I said was cocktails, but I knew what was coming. Most people wrote to me and informed me, friendly, that Trump doesn't drink alcohol. And that's fine. But I got a lot of attacks. Oh my God, people telling me I shouldn't post fraudulent statements about Trump and I should post a retraction. And I got some really nasty comments and attacks over that. I mean, my God, people. People need to chill. Just chill. That's why I don't talk about politics or religion on my channel. Because it just people want to fight about it. But cocktails. All right? So I'm getting off on a technicality. I never said Trump was drinking alcohol. <laughs> the defense rest. Make sure you tune in next Sunday because I'm going to post some more Mouse Bucket Madness. Okay? I've been getting some pretty funny footage under there, and I'll put a nice little compilation for you next Sunday. So I'm going to get my video edited, head to town, get it uploaded, feed the wood box, do a few chores, and enjoy the rest of my cocktail. You enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We'll see you next Sunday. All the best to you. God bless. Frankie and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end. Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss.